Hi guys, Penny Rose Journals, how are you doing? Um, here's a few photos of some fabric that I had decided to rust dye. Um, I took photos of the process as I went and I will take some video of the final product. Um, this is the chosen bits of fabric in a vinegar and water bath. Um, I boiled this for half an hour or more. Um, took it out, drained it a little and began to layer it up with um, just rusty bits and pieces and a layer of salt and then another layer of cloth and rusty bits and pieces and salt, basically making a a rusty lasagna. <laughs> then I rolled it up into a sausage and tied it. And you will see day by day as we go um, how the rust is developing. Um, I didn't check on the inside, I just checked the outside every day. And then when I was done, I made the video. Hi guys, Penny Rose Journals, how are you doing? Well, it's time for the big unveil. I don't know what's going on in here. This is the rust sausage. <laughs> um, you see it's leaked a little. I've been taking photos of it every day um, so that we can do this video. It smells very strongly of vinegar and um, rust. <laughs> I should probably have gloves on, but you know, I have no interest in my own health when it comes to things like that. <laughs> I don't like wearing gloves. Uh, I'm sure I get many worse things on my hands than a bit of rust. And my tetanus is up to date. So. I am going to unwrap this, show you all, and then I will go off and wash it, dry it, and show it to you again. So, I have some very lovely rust stained string. I don't know how long that will or how well that will hold on to its rust colours, but that will be a nice piece of um, yeah, stuff to add to my little pile of things that I can use to decorate <coughs> ephemera and whatnot. Of course, I still have my throat clearing issues. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon, so you'll excuse my constant clearing of my throat um, if it gets too bad I'll just delete all this and do a voiceover so I can do it in little bits then <laughs> so yeah this is um, a bundle of just random fabrics I will have shown some photos um, of the fabrics beforehand I just went through my scrap um, fabric and just grabbed out anything that sort of grabbed my fancy. Um, I also threw in a couple of doilies and a linen napkin. Um, yeah, it was basically just scraps aside from the couple of doilies and stuff. So I'm very interested to see how it's all going to turn out because, um, yeah, I haven't ever purposely done any rust dyeing before. <coughs> So the way I did this was I boiled all the um, the fabric. You'll see photos of that as well. I boiled all the fabric. There's the string, looking very lovely. I boiled all of the fabric in vinegar, and then um, wrapped it and with rusty bits. And as I wrapped it, I sprinkled salt through it. So there's all sorts of rusty things in here, which you are about to witness falling out everywhere. So I actually put all these bits in my journals as well. <laughs> That's where they came from. My, um, my little package I keep for my journals. This was a piece of um, jute fabric that I had. That is looking particularly delicious right now with all the rusty things. <laughs> and my rusty things are looking a bit more rusty as well. So. I hope I don't bang the camera. Forgive me if I do. Uh, I have limited space here between me and the camera. So there's that piece. 
um, you'll see in the photographs how clean that was to start with. Um, that's definitely a, a big change. Alright, so these were scraps from an old pillowcase. Um, they're looking quite delicious. I like that rust. I don't know how much of this is going to wash out when I wash them, but we'll see. We'll see what's left. It's all part of the fun. Right, there is going to be rusty things everywhere. Wow, look at this rust. Look at it. It's bubbled up. It's 3D rust. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I don't know. I don't get excited about things like that. It's an old bell, an old thimble. There's all sorts of good things in here. These are just little bits of um, bed sheet. Um, actually, no, this was uh, the lining of a cushion cover, this one. There are bits of bed sheet in here. There's all sorts of things in here. Like I say, I just went to my scrap bin and um, picked out anything that the colours sort of spoke to me. The size and shape of the bits of fabric. It's just very random. So, but they're the kind of bits of fabric that I like to use. Um, some more of that cushion cover. You see, it had tiny little. I think it was pale yellow and had tiny little white hearts on it. So, um, this was an old uh, cushion cover as well, or pillowcase. This one. I just thought the stripes might look interesting with the rust. Um, I do like it. I like it a lot. And I like the unevenness of it. I don't need it all to be rusty. Just these little bits and bobs. I love this crunchy rust. My hands are going to smell terrible when I'm done here. I also threw little scraps of lace in here. I found little scraps of lace in my scraps. I threw some little bits of denim in here just to see what they would do. Uh, so I'll wash those up and see how they turn out. And other sort of you know, heavy duty fabrics like that. So yeah, there's going to be some interesting things. Like I say, this is all scraps, so it's all weird shapes and sizes. There's another piece of lace. And a bit more. Some of the rusty things are actually sticking to it. They're that rusty. So I thought of actually collecting. I was in the recycling centre the other day and I was thinking of collecting some more rusty things, but um, you know, bigger things. But I actually kind of like the way the tiny things are turning out. Like I say, we'll have to see what um, what our end results are. But so far, I'm pretty pleased. This is an old piece of um, a man's dress shirt. Just a little scrap. I also, um, nothing much happened to that. I also have no idea what half the fabrics were. Um, I know you're only supposed to, supposed to do this <laughs> um, on natural fibres. Um, I guess man-made fibres don't take to it as well. So mm -mm, some of this might wash out as I go, but I just threw in everything because um, I just wanted to see. Like I say, I've not really done rust dyeing too much in the past. Um, I do my batch dyeing and that does have rusty things in it, so you know it's the same sort of thing, but this is the first time I have specifically done um, just rust and fabric. So <laughs> this is a scrap for you. <laughs> Glad that one got in there. <laughs> I would have been lost without that one. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> yeah. Another bit of men's pants of some kind. So I will just let all my rusty things dry out and put them back in their box that they live in. Um, they're in my craft room so that I can grab them and pop them in journals and stuff as I go if I want them or obviously do some more rust dyeing. Look at that rust, it's so chunky. It's so cool. I find these sort of things a bit interesting. 
may or may not be your cup of tea, I don't know, but yeah. So this is going to be sort of a video, sort of a lots of photos, because I took photos as I was going. I didn't video the process because, yeah, I just didn't. Um, but yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a bunch of denim that's been sewn together. Off cut of something I've made along the way, probably a handbag. <coughs> A little bit of twisted wire. Now we're getting down to some interesting things. So a piece of denim. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wash my hands for weeks. They're gonna smell like rust, which I'm not that fond of. <laughs> the smell of rust. Strangely enough. So yeah, this is interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what it all turns out like. It's still very damp. It's been in there, um, I don't know, four or five days. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to tell you exactly once I've done the, done the video because I have a photo of every day as it's gone by. Another bit of twisted wire. some interesting little green spots as well <coughs> not entirely sure what um, rusty thing they come from but yeah some more um, this bed sheet I think this is where we start to get into most of my interesting fabrics and scraps of lace and stuff this was a piece of lace off of an old shirt it was just in my scrap bin so that got turfed in there that mm, if that hangs on to its rust that'll be really pretty mm, who knows just a piece of fabric of some description uh, it's just a bit of, I don't know, trim that was in my scrap bin. Again, tiny bit of bed sheet. I had this length of, sort of, I don't know, webbing, I guess. I don't know. So I threw that in there as well. And that will be interesting to have a look at it was very light you can see how light it was there when it went in so this is the sort of thing I was thinking of collecting from the recycling center but I was in the middle of this process at the time and thought you know I'm just gonna leave it um, if I feel like I need more I'll get more and it's been fun watching it every day the rust bloom you can see it on the outside of the package. Um, that's what I took a photo of every day. How much rust was on the outside. Oh, there's a key. Mr. Key. Um, that's an outside piece of that um, cushion cover that um, had the little hearts on it. So. <coughs> Choking up again. Some more lace. A little piece of lace, a bit of a chunkier piece of denim. I'm interested to see how the denim will turn out. This will be great for an apocalypse journal. Put in some bottle caps, didn't know what they were going to do. Haven't really done a lot at this stage, but next go around they might. Um, rust up a bit more. Um, I haven't treated any of these little items, they just rust as they will. I'm not going to um, try scrubbing them or something to to get coatings or whatever off. This is more bed sheet. Um, 
I just let them do what they want to do. Eventually they'll rust if I do this with them often enough. <laughs> These little clips really hang on to some spots. I'm sure I'll find more when I take them to the sink, but I want to get most of them out while I'm here. This is a piece of wedding dress. So that's kind of cool. Satin. This has come up really nice, whatever this was. I think it was just a piece of calico. That's gorgeous, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Mm, loving that. Hope that sort of retains its colours. Another piece of um, pillowcase. Some more men's trousers. <coughs> These keys are beautiful, aren't they? I think they were from an old wardrobe somewhere. Another old drill bit. I probably have old drill bits in my garage I can use, to be honest. Um, I have a lot of drill bits out there I don't use, so. Interesting. Not sure what this fabric was. Feels almost like a... Um, I don't, actually don't know what this was. So I have a nice. It looks like bed sheet, but I don't think it is. I don't know. Anyway, there's that. <laughs> you can see some things didn't rust as much as others. Yeah, it makes a difference. But they'll rust eventually. They cannot resist forever. What do they say? Resistance is futile. <laughs> My nerdy side coming out. <laughs> I love these old thimbles, they look fabulous. Um, I use these quite often for the tops of um, tassels. They look good. Another piece of sheet. Just a trimming off of an old lace curtain. I didn't put much coloured fabric in here, but I did put a few pieces in. This was just a piece of a skirt that came out of my scraps. That seems to have stained up nicely. We'll see how much of that it retains once we're done. I like this side of it even better. That's the blue piece of fabric. So yeah, I will take these away once I'm done here. Um, and I will, um, yeah, like I say, wash them, dry them, probably won't iron them, I'm not much of an ironer, so I enjoy ironing, there's another bit of trim, <coughs> and then I will show them all to you again and we can see how they turned out, oh, that's yummy. So all in all I'm pretty pleased with this thus far. And some more lace. More men's trousers. <laughs> you can see the top of a thimble there, it's been standing up made a little thimble shape with divots. Don't know what that blue is from. Probably this key, I guess. Who knows? There's another piece of that um, jute fabric. I was wondering what made this impression on the outside. A little belt buckle. <coughs> Again, some more of that blue from a key that obviously had copper in it. Right, well this is a doily, 
uh, linen doily. So that's ended up quite strongly stained. So that'll be interesting. More little pieces of lace. It's a little bit of random fabric. Um, here we have a, another linen and lace doily. That's quite interesting as well. Um, a smaller lace to lace doily, crochet doily. I'm really looking forward to seeing these once they dry. Um, here's a large lace doily. Again, that's starting to look really good. And last but not least, our linen napkin. Which has stained up nicely as well. That was our outside layer. That side's very stained. So, right, that is... <coughs> me our little stack of fabric and string and lace and whatnot I am now going to go and rinse this off um, remove all the everything else and you'll see it again once it's dry so see you back here shortly I'm back and here it is this is the finished product um, I am really happy I haven't looked through any of it not just taken it out and dumped it on my desk so but I am super happy with um, what we've ended up with this is our piece of um, like burlap uh, jute cloth that's very thick it's um yeah so that's super interesting I really like that I have a big roll of this so I'll probably do more of this in the future for sure so I'll just pop everything over to my right hand side here when I'm done with it. Here's that cute little piece of trim. Everything seemed to um, like hold the rust very well. Um, it's all been washed, you can see all the strings and stuff everywhere. I'll keep all that. There's the thread that was holding it together. That is now wrapped around everything. I just threw it in the washing machine. Um, I put it in some um, bags and popped it in the washing machine. Um, a few bags, three bags for this lot. So um, yeah, it's, everything's not quite dry yet, but it's pretty dry. So just all needs to be separated out now and yeah give it a chance to dry properly and um, yeah, then packaged up, well, yeah, fold it up, put it away. Love this. Isn't that just so yummy? So yes, I will be doing more of this and like that sort of blue-green stayed as well, so I'm super excited about that. That was from a key that had some copper in it, I think. So is that piece of skirt material I really do like the the wrong side of it <laughs> better than the right side <laughs> who knows what will end up happening with that here's a piece of lace that's turned itself into a knot but anyway you can see that um, stained up quite nicely so that will be fun to play with here's some another piece that got some of that green blue on it and it stayed there's that impression of the um, top of a thimble so they're kind of cute there's quite a few of those in here because uh, I have a bunch of thimbles in my rusty stuff my rusty stuff is sitting in my hallway um, on the um, 
silicon mat that I had everything on just spread out drying so I can put it back in its box um, yeah and that other side is even sort of more spectacular when it comes to this piece particularly so yeah that's pretty cool so I'm very happy with the way everything turned out really there's that doily you can see that blue green staining there as well so this is interesting let's have a look at this piece I wanted to see this this is a piece of wedding dress satin that turned out lovely not much going on on that end but yeah definitely be doing some more of that um, this was basically just an experiment like I say this was all just scraps out of my scrap box so um, that looks nice so I wasn't sure what was going to work what was not going to work because I've heard that you're only supposed to use natural fibers um, whatever all of this is everything's taken it nicely <laughs> so I'm not uh, not gonna make any judgments as to um, you know what fabrics you can use because I don't know what any of this stuff is I mean there's calico in here obviously and there's bed sheet um, which I guess is cotton but um, yeah the rest of it could be anything as far as I know I'm not a um, not a seamstress or uh, anything and like I say most of this is just scrap from old clothing and stuff so it could be anything so I'm sure there's ways to tell what your fabric is but I don't care to learn um, it's not important to me <laughs> isn't that lovely so yeah I will be enjoying playing with this over the coming weeks months I will be doing more and more of this um, I feel because it's just super cool <coughs> anything it costs me basically is some salt and vinegar and then usually some fish and chips for dinner because <laughs> my whole house smells like a chippy and I'm like mm -hmm. you know what some chips would be really nice right now <laughs> some hot chips <laughs> so yeah um, but <laughs> yeah that's neither here nor there that's very beautiful that I really like so I might have to do a rust journal mightn't I because these are just amazing never done a color themed journal as such so yeah, a bit of a rust journal might be an interesting thing to do I love the way it sort of faded on one side but it's very crisp on the other side it's interesting to me what else have we got here that's more of that and all of these I'll be keeping all of these these will be handy little things to add to my ephemera denim to cook well and I love the way everything's frayed in the washing machine this is lovely like I say everything's slightly damp still I love the way this old dress shirt took it that um probably not as crisp as some of the other pieces but definitely grunges it up <coughs> that was some of that um, pale yellow fabric with the little hearts on it from the cushion lining that turned out nicely here's the big doily oh, that's one of those little things I knew there would be some floating around in here somewhere so that's pretty nice yeah I definitely think a rust journal is required um, lace and 
that piece of I don't know whatever this is <laughs> fabric cloth ribbon something I don't know the lace Yeah, when you just rust dye, it comes out this lovely orange colour. Now, I'm used to um, batch dyeing, and the tea component in the batch dye makes everything sort of black and grey. But without the tea, we get this sort of lovely orange that um, we all associate with the rust. So that's super nice. <coughs> Even this little piece of um, you know, curtain off cut held onto its colour nicely, so you know, I'm fairly certain that's not totally natural fibre. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just talking. Um, here's our linen napkin. Oh, look at this. It's actually made a hole. That um, that green obviously makes the let's chew the hole in the cloth. So that's interesting. Even more interesting because there was definitely no hole in this when it started. It was a complete napkin. So yeah, that's cool. Something new to investigate. Whatever it is. That is making those holes is um yeah. Those making those green stains is definitely um also making holes, so another bit of a green stain. It's no hole there though. But the rust is amazing. So yeah, there we have it. I don't know quite what has bleached that out, that's interesting because the um the color of the cloth was definitely you know a sort of a light brown color that's bleached out with by something who knows it's all very interesting there's lots of little bits of rust falling out of everything here <laughs> i really want to get this string out of this big pile of everything It's well tangled around everything, so it's going to require a little bit of persistence, I think. And I'm not really um, the most patient person on the planet, I've got to admit. Um, waiting four days for this to <laughs> work itself out was a bit of a drama in itself. But um, yes, I did. I was very good. I just looked at it every day took a photograph and then tried to forget I had it going on so it's a nice little piece of vintage lace that's now rusty um, yeah so and untangling cords makes my blood boil in seconds flat oh I like that so but I seem to be coping <laughs> which would come as a surprise to just about everybody who knows me coping with untangling something without losing my cool maybe it's because it's my art supplies computer cords drive me nuts so there we go there's that piece of lace and the piece of string that was tying it all up plus some other scungy string that's picked up along the way but look at that, isn't that great? It retained all of that colour. So, and it was well washed. With, um, you know, washing powder and the whole shebang. I didn't not do it properly because I was worried about it or something. That's a little key. And this is a piece of that shirt lace that, you know, and I'm fairly convinced that's not pure cotton or something. So, again, just talking, no idea. Have a clue. I just say things. <laughs> this is still quite damp. 
Yeah, even that has a bit of staining on it. It doesn't have a lot, but yeah. All in all, I'm very happy with um, my results. So, like I say, it was not a difficult process. Just boiled my cloth in vinegar, or vinegar and water. I had quite a lot of vinegar, but it I covered the cloth with water once I turfed all my vinegar in there and um, boiled that up for a little while and then yeah just took it out and um, lay it flat in layers and uh, I would put a layer of fabric I started out with the linen cloth um, and all the doilies and then I sprinkled my um, you know, a handful of the, my rusty things on top and then I sprinkled salt on that and then put on another layer of cloth and another layer of rusty things and salt and then another layer of cloth and just went on like that until I had run out of cloth and rusty things. <laughs> That's pretty. So yes, um, it was not difficult and then I just wrapped it up in a sausage and um, tied it with that string and left it and just looked at it every day in the morning when I came upstairs because I had it in my hallway upstairs um, resting on one of my old trunks that I keep my craft supplies in and uh, yeah just checked it took a photo of it compared it to the photos of the days before because I was interested to see how it was developing um, and then tried to forget I had it so that I didn't get frustrated at the fact I couldn't unwrap it yet. <laughs> that is beautiful. I love that. So, yeah, it's set up there. I mean, it's relatively warm because this didn't retain much. I can't remember if that had much on it to start with, but yeah, it's still interesting. Um, yeah, it's relatively warm up here because because I have my heater on downstairs because it's quite cold here at the moment um, and of course all the warm air travels upwards so my upstairs hallway can get quite warm which I don't know if that helps the process or not but yeah there we go anyway I'm sure you've seen enough of that um, I hope that was interesting for you it was certainly interesting for me. I'm, I'm really pleased with this. <laughs> and yes, definitely a rust journal coming up. And I think um, a newspaper clipping journal might receive a little bit of rusty love too. Just seems like the sort of thing you would find in there, to be honest. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I'm glad I had you guys to share this with because everybody else in my life probably thinks I'm a absolute peanut <laughs> but anyway <laughs> I appreciate you guys I know you get it so <laughs> thanks guys I will see you again next time bye